Hello and welcome to the Xenothesis podcast. My name's Richard Acton, and this week in episode 12, we're covering chapters 4 and 5 from part 3 nursery of Book 1 Dawn of Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis trilogy. Uh, and uh, trapped with me, as always, in this living spaceship is my co host, Michael Glinka. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder when I'll be able to escape finally. Probably next book. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. You're never going to help. You're stuck here now. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm enjoying being stuck, although I cannot say about my fellow humans uh, that are also stuck in the same room with me. Um, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I need yeah, to say that, that it's, uh... it's getting spicy uh, here, so... <laughs> hmm. Okay, then, uh, let's uh, get into some of that spiciness. Uh, what were your uh, predictions for this for my chapter? chapter four, okay. So I predict that uh, the next two people... Was it the predict? I think she mentioned them, actually, in the next... Uh, uh, in the chapter, I don't remember, but it was Kurt Lower and Joseph Shing that will be awakened. I think I predicted that Joseph Shing was mm. going to be awakened in the previous chapter, chapter three, but that didn't happen. She, uh, Lilith, awakened two girls... So now it's two men to be awakened. So, hmm. and I thought that maybe, maybe just with the men awakening, there will be some starting some sexual tension uh, issues appearing. But mm -hmm. I think that actually is mostly for the next chapter. <laughs> uh yeah, to a degree, yeah, yeah, to a degree. <laughs> uh, it takes a little bit of time for. But I need to say, to I need to say, the next <laughs> chapter is pretty good. Like. Uh, anyway, anyway, to be honest, uh, yeah, anyway, let's let's get on to it. <laughs> I'm getting too okay. excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that your, your your predictions there, I think, were, were are both pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah I think so. Um, to be honest, I imagine Joseph Shing as he is, to be honest, like, mm -hmm. whether, you know, a scientist or at least an engineer with a proper, mm -hmm. you know, like let's let's see and uh judge what's gonna happen you know by what mm. what we observe instead of like completely dismissing what um Lilith was saying to everyone so yes. kudos to him kudos to him he he is a he's the man he's the man <laughs> i would trust yeah good to <laughs> representative of our tribe <laughs> yes uh, yeah. so chapter 4 summary um we start with um Lilith awaken, awakening Kurt and Joseph, you know, and she takes them out, both of them, through the plants, and then she awakens them both and tells Leah and Tate to dress up Kurt while she's uh, helping Joseph, while Celine is staying useless, basically. And um, just to remind everyone, Joseph uh, Li Xing Ching was a 40 years old engineer from Canada, born in Hong Kong, and um, widower, wife died before the war, he was contemplating suicide, but um, I don't know. He 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 continued to live, and although mm. um, it's interesting because they were th on Kali were thinking about putting him into family for, but they for some reason they didn't. They described him soft but quite deadly. I s am still to see what they mean by that. That's an interesting, mm. huh? Yeah, that's a it's an interesting description. I'd be curious to see what what that might mean. I mean, you know, because the rest of the chapter is describing him like being put a bit of an in danger, and you know, and him being a bit, you know, yeah. There's not really much signs of deadliness. Yes, yes. Be. He he <laughs> seems to be. I would say more like Kurt being the cop from New York, which is the second person that that Lilith awakened, um, mm -hmm. would be more uh, deadly. But he seemed pretty new, uh, pretty. Um, Easy ongoing, especially after he gets uh, Selena under his wings. Hmm. <laughs> so I guess, yeah, I, th I guess Lilith was right about you know, as long as you give him focus on something, he is, he is as good to go. Yeah, he seemed like because there were these you know, a couple of fights occurring, and he seemed to be able to kind of slot into the uh, a bit like the role that he knew, right? He could, yes, he could yes. fall into place relatively well. Yes. So he had some structure, as it were. So, but the, the, but the thing is, right, it's interesting because the moment, I mean, I always forget that uh, when these people, you know, when this whole situation happened, you know, it was 1950s, right? So 60s, 50s, you know, America, right? So I always forget 
that uh, whenever the people interact with them, that there's I don't see usual um, racism. You would say I would say you know in 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 their interactions, like considering that Lilith is black and stuff like that. But there's there's those things, the small things that like for example when he when Kurt comes out and he's like you know on which side you are. Right, like which side are you? Hey, that that sort of really reminds me always. That brings me back. It's like, oh, it was the Cold War. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure we know if it was like when exactly this was taking place. I don't know if it was as early as necessarily the 60s. I forget exactly what the time frame was, but like theoretically, it could be as late as the the 80s, right? Because the um, and that would have been yeah. around when she was writing it, because the you know, the Cold War was still going on that time so it's a, yeah it's a little unclear kind of where in the the history of the uh situation with america and the whole civil rights movement how far along that might have gotten mm, true uh, true so it's yeah. yeah but it still feels to me like uh maybe the author doesn't want to comp- over complicate stuff even further considering the circumstances that they're all finding each other in. But anyway, mm, mm. so the first thing that uh, Kurt says, obviously, when he comes out, is like, "Where are we? And who's in charge?" Right? It's like like a real policeman. Policeman would ask immediately, <laughs> and mm-hmm. obviously, um, you know, the the newly awakened people started the month. You know, for whom Lilith works, but basically, the end story is there's no sides here because literally there's nothing on Earth anymore, and they're they were captured slash rescued by extraterrestrials and yeah that's uh, you know. an interesting uh point there because i think uh lilith kind of hedges that thing rescued as opposed to necessarily captured she's she seems to have genuine ambivalence on that point yeah <laughs> I, I think she still cannot like we we talked about this before and i think she still doesn't know exactly how to phrase it so that they're still on her side but they don't think she is on the side of the captors but yeah. then it still doesn't work for her anyway because when we see when we go to the next chapter we will clearly see that it's there's some problems mm-hmm. yeah so uh, i'm not sure how much of that is her wanting to sort of keep the humans on side and how much of it is her kind of know, having some slight genuine sense of, I don't know, maybe gratitude for having been rescued by Lauren Carly, but she's still clearly not at all happy about the the way they're conducting themselves and the kind of the, the forcing of the trade and all the rest of it. It's, yeah, uh, I think it also comes down to the fact that, you know, all that responsibility was thrown at her on her like Mm. it's it's yeah she's 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 been with them for years and now and obviously she's been she was being prepared for all of this so Mm. but yeah um you know it's it's not like she can do anything and when whenever they ask her for proof the only thing she can do is like oh i can you know grow walls like can you do this and then you know they go like touch the walls and try to but basically no it's it's not that they can do anything about it like it's that's the fact yeah, yeah, that's uh, all she really has as an ability to sort of demonstrate that anything like technologically unusual is going on is this, you know, growing walls and the fact that she can open stuff that they can't to get food and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I I wonder how. I mean, you put in notes here that you wonder how would we, how would we react to mm. somebody growing walls, right? Like. Mm. I think at the moment if I was awake and be like noticed in the room that like just some humans and they told me like, oh, we are captured, we were saved by aliens. And then the lady shows us a wall that she can grow a wall, right? Hmm. I'd be like, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, I, for me, that's enough. I, I think that like, the moment you can grow a wall by just touching a wall, that's that's pretty much already sufficient yeah. uh, evidence for that, you know, for uh, being... Uh, Definitely, because definitely we cannot do that with our current technology and knowing True, our, uh... true. But it, I suppose it, it might not be enough to go aliens, right? You know, if, if you've been you know, vomited out of some weird plant-like suspension pod and now you're in this uh, strange room and you can grow, like this, someone in there can grow walls. I mean, it says this advanced biotech, but it doesn't necessarily say it's alien biotech. 
Yeah, but still, I'm yeah. not really in a conspiracy theories that, you know, that somewhere in, in some American base, somewhere there is a technology, alien technology that we... I don't get. I don't buy that. So I don't think... I think the moment she would... A person like Lilith would show us that, you know, show us that, the, that she mm. can grow a wall by just touching her hand. I think that'll be, for me, at least evidence that there's definitely something going on here that there is definitely mm. not from our planet. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that, like, the the majority of the probability mass is concentrated over Lilith is telling us the truth here, at least to a significant degree. Um, and then slim possibility. And I think I would take a little, uh, Joseph's um, st- stand on here where he says, basically, I believe that Lil- Lilith believes and I haven't decided yet what I believe. It does seem yeah. important, though, for us to behave as though we're in a ship unless we find out for certain that we aren't. A ship is in space. It could be an excellent prison if we... Uh, could get out of this room so hmm. yeah okay let's assume that that's the case um observe and then see what can we do next yep yep i think uh the just the the strategy of kind of uh wait and see gather some more information seems like a reasonable one yeah uh, and it, it sounds like uh, joseph was asking a lot of questions um, yes yes he, the, i mean obviously it'd be like i would be like oh how can you do can you you know make a protrusions how much can, can you control it i'd be like you know full-on mm-hmm. fascinated by it i'd be like wow mm-hmm. yeah yeah i'd be uh like you know i want some instruments i want to see how this works exactly, <laughs> like, you know, exactly. i want to measure some stuff like, yeah you know if you could yeah. have a microscope and look on the microscope on the wall and just scrape yeah. it and look in the slide be like uh, can you touch this mm-hmm. slide now and see if it grows on itself or is it like yeah, yeah. are the cells multiplying or is it no it's taking the mass from somewhere yeah. <laughs> what are you secreting like what's have you got some in some uh, new genetic capability to produce some signaling molecules and like kind of sequence you it's like and i, I don't want to know all kinds of stuff it's like, yeah yeah of course, mm. of course, uh, ladies and gentlemen who are listening to us, of course, after Lilith's consent, we are not like, you know, some, uh, as we previously talked about um, the <laughs> stereotypes of scientists in books, you know, like either the evil scientists will completely ignore scientists because uh, so we just, after she would say yes, so you, you can <laughs> test this on me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, that's definitely, I'd be like, and I'd say, well, if, if it was me that had those kind of abilities, also, I'd be just I'm really curious about how all that worked. So I'd be like running all those tests on myself. It's like, how's, how's all this work? Mm. Uh, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm one of those people who just wants to know stuff when it comes to that kind of thing. Like, it's an interesting divide, actually, because things like, um, like, like people who, who do or don't want to know the results to like genetic screening tests. Yeah. Like, I know some people who. Like if you say, and you know, I can tell you what your like Alzheimer's risk or whatever that stuff is, or just say no, I don't want to know. And I, I, I'm in the camp where I just I, 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 I don't at all understand that mentality. I, I if think... there's a new, if there's new information that you could know about this stuff, I can't understand how you would not want to know it. I think, but I know there are people who have the complete opposite reaction, and I. Uh, yeah, I, don't know. I think the problem, Richard, here is is that with things like, for example, you know, if what's the chance of you having Alzheimer or multiple sclerosis or any of those things mm-hmm. that can really affect you? And you, I think, is the fact that there is nothing you can do about it. Um, you know, it, it, that that lack of control over it that eventually it will happen, right? So let's say if you have thirty percent chance of developing Alzheimer's, right? That I think people would rather not know and just continue because without thinking it's like you know, shit, like what am I supposed to do now, right? Like I can't control it. Eventually it'll happen. And I think it's that panic in people that that's why people don't want to know. On the other hand, I understand your mentality because I'm the same. I would rather know because then okay, if that's the uh, is that's the case, I need to prepare for this. And you know, like if I'm gonna have Alzheimer's, I need to, you know, find ways of like study read some studies on how the best way to preserve my memory as much as I can. Make sure I see yeah. a doctor, you know, like, you know, trying to make sure that I keep it in check, that nothing is changing. And stuff yeah, like that. So, like, but- there's always something that you can do with that information that is relevant to how you might live your life in the subsequent, uh, like it, it, between now and when something might happen to you, right? You can mitigate risk. You can, you know, learn about uh, 
what the you know, best available uh, treatment or mitigation strategies are. You can plan. Like you, you can you can make financial decisions. There's all kinds of stuff that, that's relevant for like what you do with the, your life leading up to that point. I think people <laughs> are scared and also they don't want to add yeah. to their amount of like, like responsibilities and stresses they already have. Like, I mean, some, I mean, it depends on the characters as well, I think. But it's, this is the, like, it, it's going to happen irrespect or or like the the risk is what the risk is you know, it's I mean, you know. something happens right so it doesn't like just not knowing what the truth is doesn't make it untrue right? no it's, no absolutely, it, absolutely the world is the way it is so you should live in it and react to it the way it really is i, it's, I don't have any handle on how you well, yes, no, 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 I agree. Put that in a box. I agree, but the <laughs> thing is, is that also, you know, we all are going to die. That's the fact, right? Yeah. There's no, you know, that's the cycle of life. We, we, we are born, we develop as a humans, we do something, we achieve something or not, doesn't matter. We, we will definitely do something that will leave some sort of footprint behind, right? And then we die, right? That's the cycle of life. But people don't think about death. Because it's so far ahead of them. But in reality, you know, like the probability of being hit by a car or being hit by met- meteorite or, I don't know, just not waking up because you have an aneurysm, right, d- during sleep. All those things, percentages, you know, like of this happening will take place, right? This is the, the fact. Mm. But people don't think about it because, one, why would you think about something like that, you know, it may or may not happen, Right. So you don't think about it, but then the moment you you go and somebody with, you know, they do screening and then they for gene screen and say, okay, there's a high chance that you will, considering your family history and looking at your genome, that um, you will develop Alzheimer's or cancer or whatever, hmm. right? This is something different, I think, in this perspective, because we know that the cycle of life happens and will happen, but this is different. This is affect our lifestyles, right? This is changes to our circumstances where, you know, we know how awful those diseases are, cancer or any other thing that they're genetically hmm. caused, right? So, so we are scared that um, we, you know, those things, we, we don't want those things to happen. And it, will, it, it may or may not happen. But now we know, oh, there's a higher chance that will may happen, right? And this is, I think this is the, the, the bliss of ignorance sometimes is better for some people. I think some people are just not mentally, they don't have this mental willpower to actually be able to cope with such thing. And it's understandable. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily... It right. It seems like a slightly condescending explanation to think of it in those terms, but well, it's yeah, not I that like know. I don't want to think of condescending. No, no, no. It's it's just more of of um. It's just sometimes people don't want to. They have other troubles already on their mind, and they don't want to add additional things, right? There, because you know, family. Yeah, well, so, yeah, but like, it's not actually adding additional things, right? Those things are there, irrespective of whether or not you know about them. So it's uh, well, yeah. But the is, awareness. Uh, you're you're talking to a guy who went into aging research because, uh, <laughs> and I, I decided I didn't have enough like time to figure out all the rest of things. So I'd better solve the problem of whether or not I can Stop figure out aging. if I can live longer first. <laughs> so it's yeah. And, uh, but anyway, yeah. So that was a. Uh, a tangent on my personal pet peeve about why people don't want to know things. <laughs> no, 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 that's understandable. I'm on your, I'm on your uh, ship, right? I'm, I'm also the type of person who'd rather know, and sort of start thinking what to do next. But mm. yeah, I, I, I get, I get why people would not want to care. In my own way, yeah. I'm sure people have other explanations why would you no, know, they would not want to know. But you no, know, I would have to first of all hear their side to understand. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it's like I have a really difficult time putting myself into that that yeah. way of thinking. Yeah, yeah. I, I I can't figure out how to empathize with that angle. That's alien to me. <laughs> it's a perf- perfect explanation to a perfect topic that you know, uh, to a perfect book to you know about being <laughs> alien thinking an alien. Mm-hmm. Yep, Zeno minds. Yeah, Zeno minds. <laughs> It might be the case that we are the Xenomines in here, Richard. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so back to the chapter and of the tangent. Uh, basically, this is the end of the chapter where um, Lilith explains to the newly awakened people that 
why the Onkali saved them and about the trade, what it involves to, and basically saying that Joseph showing his amazing side again, saying whether they believe or not, they need to keep their eyes open and learn. Hmm. Yes, yeah, I think that that attitude, uh, as I said before, just the sort of the wait and see approach that he's got makes makes the most sense here. But yeah, it's a, there's a, not really a, a huge amount actually sort of going on in terms of uh, occurrences, right? She just is no, waking up no. people. They're kind of acclimatizing to it, asking some questions about what's going on. And actually, that that in fact speeds up in the next chapter. So, like, hmm. the the because I have a prediction of the next two people who awaken and then uh, what's going to happen. But the chapter actually awakens two people and then jumps into more and more people being awakened every so often. So, I think hmm. it's sort of it's starting to speed up um, because this was sort of just to introduce the main I don't know maybe six or so characters that will have hmm. some influence uh, on the future. And now we are starting to get what will be the group mentality have, uh, be after, you know, realizing they're on, there's so many of us, there's you know, nothing to do, we're on an alien ship, what do we do in these circumstances? So, yeah, hmm. this was a really short chapter. The next chapter, in fact, is longer uh, and goes into more details on. I, I see, we can see, start to see what the people are starting to think. Hmm. Okay, so shall we do your predictions? Yeah, yeah. So my chapter five prediction was that I thought that Hilary Ballard and Derek Volsky will be awakened next. So Derek was uh, a fella, a young fella who did part some part time jobs, but love, mostly love photography. You know, the um, a fella who didn't know what to do with himself. And Hilary Ballard was a poet, artist, playwright, actress, singer, and frequent collector of unemployment compensation. Very bright, but the Ankali had to put her back to sleep because she broke her two arms trying to escape from her cage. So I thought those two people next to be awakened. And I thought that in this chapter, we will start to see some infighting happening because the amount of people, closed room, nothing to do except for, you know, Lilith telling them, this is what we, and you, you, you get used to each other. Yeah, it was about something to happen. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So you're you're right about the infighting. Yeah. Uh, the that, people, that I guess, were completely wrong. She picked the other two people that were on the list: uh, uh, Gabriel Rinaldi and Beatrice uh, Dwyer. Just uh, why did you think uh, Derek and Hillary? Any particular? I thought they were the least. Um, uh, to be honest, I missed the name Gabriel uh, uh, and Beatrice um, from the list mm-hmm. because when I looked at the episode ten notes, they were when we summarized them, I completely. Um, Miss, miss them. I don't know. Skip them somehow. But I thought that Derek and Hillary would be the least dangerous. Like, because there okay. was the first one. The uh, what was his name? Uh, the first fella that she described, uh, Hungarian, I think, with starts with V. His name. Um, oh, uh, Victor. Victor. Yes, Victor. He was, you know, he said very quiet that he will kill all his captors, right? I thought, no, this guy is not going mm. to be awakened, right? He's not going to be the, the guy she's going to wake. But I just saw those two names that they seem to be very easygoing. Okay, some non-threatening people. Yes, to exactly, exactly. Keep things calm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but she picked the other two who... Um, so she picked the actor who the Onkali couldn't figure out whether he's actually himself or not after starving him. And then mm. the other lady, Beatrice, who was who wouldn't speak up until she was dressed up, but the moment she was that she uh, she was so likable that the Uloi wanted to uh, parent her. So mm. I understand the Beatrice. Gabriel on the other side, on the hand, I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. Yeah, it's a it's a tricky one. Uh so, yeah, and so the 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 fact that Gabriel was so uh, so method that they couldn't figure him out is uh, I know that, that that seems like a red flag to me. Just... Yes, yes, I think like he would. I, I feel like he would be one of the people who stir shit, you know, around. Like you know, he pretends to be someone else and then show up someone else, you know, like in secret, like, oh, actually, I'm like this. And then he still, he plays them like a spider in a spider web, right? And imagine like a mastermind, mm. basically. If you're this good yeah, of an uh, actor... And it's it's hard to get a handle on on what his his like motivations are. Yes, and so you, you don't know what he's going to do with that ability he has to kind of uh, inhabit other characters. Uh, so, so let's get yeah, to maybe uh, to the chapter five summary. So mm-hmm. 
as we said, as I said, you know, the, the other two people were all actually awakened, and Celine is still useless. Uh, generally, like it's, it's she's being described as useless, and everybody just looks at her like, "Oh, can you please catch a grip?" Hmm. Uh, but we get to the point where Tate is getting bored with the process of awakening people and says they should double the numbers each time. But Lilith thinks otherwise because she already thinks it's too fast um, hmm. that they need to go know, get to know each other better. But you know, the argument goes back and forth, but they never reach a conclusion. Like. Uh, Lilith described when it comes to her and uh, Tate um, and hmm. the chapter says you know it's that time passes again three days later there's uh, people seem to be settling in and people are starting to pair up Gabriel with Tate Celine with Kurt you know um, and as we mentioned actually Lilith started to awaken two more people every two three days so there's more and more people hmm. being awakened we don't know their names um, but she has awakened more women than men to minimize the violence, right? Yeah. So it seems like she was she was kind of equivocating over whether or not to wake up many more men, but she they, she decided that they weren't causing too much violence, right? So she just sort of kept the balance slightly in favor of women, yeah. and then uh, I think because maybe at least there is men. a um, a very primitive, maybe be less primitive fighting in fighting for males females in between males i guess uh as well uh but this agreement was bound to happen i mean this was like you know just to happen you know the more people you work awake and then more people are, the longer they stay in the confinement um it's gonna get bound to get spicy um <clears throat> so well we are told that card is helps each time as you know as a policeman to help to stop it and um although lilith was allowing to the infighting to happen just to because to reduce the frustration the anger sort of to let to settle things down right um although mm. she would stop them if it got too bad but still um Kurt- yeah it's interesting that uh, she's kind of taking this slightly more hands off approach to uh, conflicts arising between the people it's uh yeah i'm not not sure that's necessarily the best strategy i think as well that it's not probably not the best right considering that she's supposed to lead them in a way stepping up to ensure this is the you know the problem is right she has awakened them and there's nothing really Mm. they could do it people need some entertainment and i mean like in confinement there is a uh, I mean, at least a schedule or some sort of like, okay, everyone, mm-hmm. wake up, let's go to exercise, and everybody, you know, does the exercise, and then they like they go eat, and then blah blah, blah talk about something. Yeah, um, like, yeah. I don't know, make Growing up some board games, games or, something. or something, anything, right? But yeah, yeah, this is a problem. Yeah, otherwise, people would just probably get into fights, right? Yes, and yeah, um, I can see that. You know, Kurt tells her, you know, you could be a good cop, uh, considering that, you know, she can overwhelm people her, with her super strength. Uh, but. Although I don't, she doesn't seem to have been doing that particularly. She's just been. It doesn't sound like she's been sort of physically intervening in these fights uh, and, and to any significant degree. I mean, maybe like a little bit, but she's not had to. No. Sort of, you know, break out the super strength. That's correct, except for this one time and. Where basically hmm. this woman called Jean, uh, Jane Jean Pellerin um, demanded meat Jean, uh, demanded meat in her diet, even though nobody was eating hmm. any meat, and even though Lilith told them the non Kali no, don't eat meat, so you won't get any. And then basically that woman directed her frustrations to Lilith, trying to beat her up and trying to overwhelm, <laughs> overwhelm her. But Lilith, like a professional hmm. boxer, just two jabs in her, and she already went unconscious. It's like, yeah. Hmm. You know, this shows how strong Lilith is, and basically, you know, Liv stayed with her until she awakened, and then when the lady saw her, you know, Lilith just disappeared into her room. But like, yeah, that's a, an, an interesting thing to get very uh, frustrated about. I don't know. I mean, I'm a vegetarian, so maybe it doesn't resonate. But I, don't know. I think it, I think it's not even that, Richard. I think it's just the fact that you know, imagine being doing the same thing over and over. So you wake up, you eat the same thing, you there's nothing to do, you go to bed, do nothing, blah, blah. And it just day by day by day, I mean, it doesn't matter. The variety, I think, it's just the variety in the life is necessary, right? You know, it's not <laughs> like you spend, you know, if somebody got 
forbid took my computers away right i would have to find myself again trying to find entertainment as the old times right you know what to do like going out and stuff mm. like that right god that tells you awful yeah. things about me <laughs> being a complete shut in <laughs> but you know it's the, the necessary mm. of variety it's, it's not it's been i don't know what we're talking maybe a couple of weeks tops that these people have been away yeah but still some people are less patient you know some people are more some people are less so it's it's hard to tell i think in my opinion mm. uh but yeah so this is the first time i think in this in the last few chapters that we finally see what Liv is well the narrator tells us what the what Liv is thinking about um, so this is a mm. quote from the book. Liv went to her room, sat thinking for a few months about the strength Nikanj had given her. She had pulled her punches, not intending to knock Jean unconscious. She was no longer concerned about Jean now, but it bothered her that she no longer knew her own strength. She could kill someone by accident. She could maim someone. So it's it's interesting that she was given the strength, but she never actually tested it. Like, it's been mm-hmm. a while before, you know, she was given the strength before she was uh, put in that room. So I personally would try anything like, oh, you've strength how much, right? Can you give me some weight to lift, you know, compared to my older self? Yeah. Although I, I suppose it might just be the um, uh, the strength in the context of, of people, right? She may have tested it on inanimate objects and that's not had the kind of um, the same emotional impact as, as seeing what happens when she... Well, I mean punches someone the thing is the problem with fights is when people imagine like is that usually by a few many fights are within a few seconds done right it's this and but the problem is with fighting is that one even nowadays even the weakest person if they hit person in a place that you know a temple in their head or somewhere that a wrong punch can really can cause massive damage right it's 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 not like um nothing will happen right it's some punches, obviously, you know, if how you train and etc. But like, it it can also disable someone, right? It it can really cause a lot of harm. And considering yeah, now, so there's always a low probability risk that you could do serious injury whenever you hit someone. Yeah. But the the probability is there, and it's been cases, a lot of cases where people, you know, were fighting, you know, and then suddenly just one wrong punch, and that person was either dead, or you know, something really bad happened to them, and they're disabled for the rest of their lives. So now, considering the fact that Lilith's you know, even though she was a woman, even though she was quite strong as a woman, now has the ability mm. to actually easily overwhelm people because her muscles are much more efficient or whatever else Nikan did to her muscles to maybe higher fiber density. Like, considering mm. that she has can output higher power from the, you know, from her, you know, from her muscles, mean that mm. not being able to know what, how much strength you should put can really do it. You know, imagine like if she put full strength on that punch against her, right? I feel like and with her strength, she could probably crush her skull and dent it like as if she was hit by a sledgehammer. Hmm. So it's it's that type of strength. You know, you may not be able to tell about animals, maybe, but lifting things, right? Like seeing how much more you can lift is a really good indication of how much um, you can yeah yeah you know, so we're, limit yourself we're a little un it's a little unclear exactly how strong she is but it's uh yeah uh, uh definitely uh an added thing it is always one of those uh, whenever there's super strength in a story especially if it's very exaggerated super strength in you know like superman or whatever yes. the, it's it's rarely sufficiently examined like what that I- I- implies for the person who can wield it right because i mean if, if you if you're superman you shake someone's hand it you got to be super careful, right? Yeah, I mean, the case yeah, of Superman, at, at instant, like, just... depend on which Superman versions we're talking about. Like, I mean, he could, mm. you know, lift the planet. Somebody, I mean, somebody, the calculation. So, I mean, with that amount of strength, let's say, um, mm. you really have to be like, not even, you know, you just have to straighten up your hand in front of them and not really, I mean, it depends on how much control you have. But yeah, it is quite interesting. Yeah, I sort of, uh, you've got this almost like, a philosophical immovable object right so you, you you as an ordinary person you can't like whatever you do it 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 moves and you, there is no way of resisting exactly, it. Right? exactly exactly so it's just yeah so uh, it, you'd need the the ability to perceive how much pressure you are exerting in very fine 
detail with great dynamic range in order to successfully gauge any action that you took because otherwise you could accidentally just reduce anything to dust basically and i, I don't think we're talking about um uh, like that level of no no of course but, but, but the in analogy enough, applies yeah analogy yeah. applies it, not knowing the range mm. as you said it's already mm. quite scary i think and you know mm. that, i think that's that that would definitely put myself i think in perspective that what should i do in case you know like i don't want to harm anybody in general um mm. and the whole purpose of this is trying to everyone to survive right lil doesn't want anybody to get hurt but but who knows yeah yeah it's definitely a be a disconcerting realization so yeah but this is where the chapter becomes a bit more spicy I would say um, we get to know <laughs> like that this week again spicy spicy so um, the you know it's we get to know a bit more about the fling that Joseph Shing oh and even rhymed uh, has with uh, Lilith so you know Lilith realizing that she has more energy and strength that you know she ha- she used to have you know starts to exercise but then Joseph comes on and is like are you okay uh, and she was like, oh, a couple bruises. Mm, she's telling you you're a man. She's telling people you're a man, you know, even though, and although Lilith laughs at this remark, Joseph says that people think that you're starting to think that you're not human at all, which is... Hmm. Yeah, so, so Jean was was saying that yeah, she was, Lilith was a man. Yeah, yeah, she was, how hard yeah, yeah. He, she'd punched her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was worried that they will find Lilith as a focus to release their frustrations on. And mm. it actually seems to be, you know, it that started to seem to the, the Liv and Joseph became close, you know, although it caused, and, you know, he, he, he pulled her in to, to sit down with him and, and although it caused pain to Liv, you know, not physical pain, but mental pain, I think she was still wonder why she encouraged him to stay around her. And we learn a mm. bit more about this whole situation that there is something in actually going because Tate was trying to discourage Lilith uh, with the, you know, getting close to Joseph because she called him old, short, and ugly. Whereas Lilith's like, oh, well, he's 40 and he's not that ugly, actually, in fact. And even Tate, co- and Tate even tried to uh, try stealing him from her uh, just to prove the point that she can. But Joseph just found it funny that she's even trying. And, you know, he was able to discern that the she was Tate was just trying to cause problems, right? And and this is where mm. the problem starts because this is, um, it seems that this is where the the point where people started to also follow the similar fashion just to cause troubles. They starting to become destructive because they have nothing to do. Mm. Yeah, the the boredom and starting to to get to people. It's interesting that that uh, Joseph is 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 uh, perceptive enough. To, to notice that Tate's just kind of doing this to to screw with Lilith, that's uh, I think another kind of. Uh, point I mean, in his I favor. think the point is that considering that they don't agree at all, Tate and Lilith, like when mm. you listen, they they never come to a conclusion as Lilith described. They always their arguments always end at the standpoint. There's never a compromise mm. in any way. Yeah. So I think he realizes that whatever Tate is doing, she's just trying to probe. Lilith in one way or another Mm, mm. but this is what the problem is is that this behavior sounds like that other people are starting to follow in this fashion and it's causing there's a reason behind all the more savage fights is the true reason behind the most more savage fights and an increasing number of bored caged humans could not help finding destructive things to do as Joseph described Mm. so yeah yeah that's uh and I think yeah and he's also perceiving what what Lilith had already, you know, said to the Ankali that would happen. Right, the the people will focus their their anger on me uh, because I'm some kind of you know representative of of what seems to be capturing them. Right, yeah. I, I can't really avoid that ending up in that that role in some of their heads. So it's uh, I know that's beginning to to manifest. Yeah, and that's the problem. And you know, it, it, I I f- I feel for Lilith because she was put in this pers- uh, position, and now 
everybody seems to to like sort of get at her right it's trying to to see cause problems and obviously i'm sure i don't know how many people are there ready right in the whole group awakened group but i feel that mm-hmm. this whole situation is going to escalate and yes um and this is going to get a point that either lilith steps up and you know the old style beat some people around and then like okay this is what's gonna happen and whether mm-hmm. you like it or not or she will allow something to happen and you know but anyway i, I to be honest i don't get this being bored right they're all being as you said they're being only awake a few days weeks right um yeah. The idea, I mean, okay, I get being closed in one room and not being able to do anything, but hmm. trying to learn more, trying to discover about the people, trying to, I don't know, think about think about yourself and your position. Your, I don't know, just contemplate, meditate, anything. Yeah, I think I, I think I, I, I agree to a certain extent. I mean, maybe I'm underestimating how quickly you'd go kind of stir crazy in this space, <laughs> but um, like I'd. Uh, I don't know, we've been in the, the sort of pandemic lockdown thing, so maybe I'm like renormalized to being stuck inside or something. Uh, the thing is, right, the, uh, this is a bit different because yeah. we have something to do, right? Mm. Both of us are mm. doing our jobs. We're studying, mm. we're learning, we're having some entertainment. We can. I don't mind staying at home. I was always a nerd. I can stay at home full stop, mm. right? But there yep. is something. But then there Same are here. some people out there that already are like oh against the masks against it's like a minor inconvenience in their life and they're already you know lighting up the torches and pull taking out the pitchforks <laughs> right it's like you know you're locked for a while just let it be right you know i get maybe you don't like your family and your kids okay i got it uh maybe you have you know a um no, maybe I shouldn't go there, but you know, like an office affair or something that you miss, but it doesn't matter. Just let it be. It's not going to disappear. Everybody's on the same position. Just chill, right? Think about it. Take a perspective, you know, thinking about, you know, what to do. And, but people, yeah, as I minor inconvenience. It's, in, in, and everybody's exploding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I suppose it's, yeah, let's that, that's, that's not get too far off onto the <laughs> pandemic direction because that's, yeah, yes, that's yes. A, a whole other rabbit hole, yeah, right? It's, but, it's... Uh, so re- returning to the particular scenario here, but yeah, I, th- I think I mean I'd probably be pestering Lilith though, right? I'd be I'd, I'd be asking questions. I'd be like, you know, what do the Owen Carly look like? You know, what do they eat? How tall are they? Like, what what's the what's their home planet? You know, what's, what's how far have they traveled to get here? I'd be, I'd be like, you know, all of the implications of that you know like, all of the you know, like I, I want her to tell me everything she knew about them i'd be like uh you know trying to figure out all the angles on the stuff and the fact that they they and it's, it's interesting because the how do you think you'd react if some alien species was like we can genetically engineer you with you know super strength and long life and awesome immune system and all this stuff uh i mean the fact that you don't have a choice in the matter is kind of a inconvenient component here, but it's one of those things where, like, for me, I'd be kind of like, yeah, this sounds good to me. It's one of those situations where, like, is it uh, what's what's the, the description of it? It's like, it, um, if you'd say yes anyway, and you're being forced to do it, right? Uh, is it a is it really coercion or is it not? I don't know. It's, I think that it depends on the perspective, yeah. Richard, because if if hmm. for us uh, because looking for us hmm. we are both you know world interested in scientists right um i think if i was given chance that oh you will live longer much longer than you can normal your normal lifespan is and you're gonna look younger and your mind is gonna be clearer right and you can still continue hmm. pursuing your science research and stuff like that i'll definitely say yes right i'll mm-hmm. definitely go for this because it feels to me like it's an enhancement of what I'm already doing, right? And it gives me more time to focus on things and figure my position in life, right? What's my purpose in life, right? Um, but the moment, the problem is, is that you're giving this choice, not being a, really a choice, but you're giving this choice, mm. but you're not in the same environment as you usually were. 
And the same for Lilith. She's on the ship, right? If I was on the ship in the mm. same position, right? Like like you, I would be pestering Lilith, you know, like, give me this, give me that, tell me this, tell me that. Like, what's the situation? And I would be trying to figure out what they are, you know, and just trying to, how they function and their biology, you know, trying to imagine the hypothesize on their biology and stuff like that, right? Mm. But if I was not not given the opportunity to actually test or at least expand my knowledge in some way, you know, during some experience, whatever, I think that even though I had more time, but what do I do with this time? Mm. Right? Like, you know, it's this one thing, you know, just living to live. Mm. Is, I, I, I can't imagine myself like to do it. If I had, you no, know, I mean, there's one thing survival, right? Obviously, if the survival kicked in, right? Obviously, I would stand on my ears to to make sure that, you know, everyone I love, if they're at the, um, to survive and make sure that everybody is, you know, content and there's you no know, happy in more mm. one way or another but if there's nothing to else to do like i'm safe i'm getting food i am this shelter right so i'm provided the basic necessities right then what else do i have to do and i, I think that's the problem that those people are facing is that you know even though they mm. might not have or live in specific she's being enhanced for you no know, longer life right like she's been given all the basics so she doesn't have to try for them but what else is there for her right how do you mm. at this point there's like the necessity you know like people in uh expand you know art poetry or whatever you know science engineering they come up with stuff something to keep themselves occupied but she wasn't allowed to do those things until quite late until nikanj give her books and stuff like that so mm. yeah yes I'd, I'd definitely be asking for for paper as well so i could you know write down thoughts and ideas for a what to ask the Owen Carly when actually, I have the opportunity to speak to Actually, that gave me an idea it's... how to actually deal with this mm. problem of people having, right? Let them have a diary yeah. of some sorts where mm. basically they can sit down and think, okay, so today is nothing. I mean, obviously, the most of them are like, that day nothing happened or today somebody awakened, right? <laughs> but like, had them think about their thoughts, right? Like, just to sort of, so, mm. something. They need something, the interest, right, to to do. And this is the problem, right? I think the Owen Carly yeah. don't realize that, that this is this is the main problem that, that people are getting bored. I think that's uh, uh, it's towards the end of the chapter here that there is a little bit of a there's a, an ongoing discussion about that. It starts out with with Tate saying, you know, we should wake up more people. Yes, yes. And Lilith is kind of reluctant to do that, and then uh, Joseph is coming in on the side of we should probably wake up some more people because it's people are getting bored. Exactly, and, and this is it. Seems like a yeah, and this is where, you know, the okay. chapter sort of co- comes to co- conclusion, sort of, where basically, you know, Joseph um, asks if Lilith could actually talk to Don Carly, you know, provide something to keep people busy. Or, as you just said, you know, as Tate mentioned, to awaken a large number of people, maybe attend at once, so that they're actually busy with the newcomers, to, so that they can introduce them by themselves, you know, oh, hi, hi, and blah, blah, mm. blah. So they, they, they have to do something to do. Because Joseph is worried that actually Lilith is in danger, that the last people are starting talking, you no, know, like, oh, she's the she's the corroborator of the of this, you know, our captors. And, mm. Um, but till Lilith tells him, though, actually, what's the plan? You know, what like the once they're awakened and happy, they'll be moved to like an onkali made fragment of earth on the ship that represent the um a tropical forest where they will have to train. Where you know Lilith will show them how to weave back uh, baskets and you know hammocks and stuff like that. And where basically they spend a whole a whole year training and learning how to survive. Yeah, we we, we learned that she did in fact spend a year in that uh, jungle simulation yes. that they've got. Yes, and yeah. the thing is, but. Joseph is worried in a way this way because the own Kali present on Kali could unify them or even could put Lilith in the greater danger that she was actually correct mm. and she somehow is still fine with them, right? She's, you know, so he's trying to get the humans to do something before anything bad will happen. And, you know, as, as and he finally convinces her to, you know, yeah, I'm going to awaken the next 10 people, you know, just to... But we also learned that Joseph once came into Lilith's room and um, asked her if he, if he could join her in her bed, you know. And uh, and as Lilith described, it took everything she had to not to pull him in. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, a spicy, you know, a bit of um, gossip go ongoing. Uh, and uh, and I'm sure this spicy gossip is going between the humans, and there's sure some resentment towards Joseph because of that. Yeah. 
that's a, a distinct possibility. And basically, you know, the chapter yeah. ends in here where, where you know Lilith deciding to awaken ten people and split them between Tate, Leah, herself, and Joseph. And you know, all those surprised about Leah. And Lilith tells Joseph that no, she's alright, and you know, she likes Leah actually, and Leah likes Lilith, in fact. Hmm. And the chapter ends okay. with a cliffhanger yeah. when suddenly the wall opens and Nikanj appears. Yes, uh, that's uh, so. Uh, Joseph is going to meet Nikan yes. in the next chapter. Yes. That's uh... so. It's. I feel like so. This is my chapter six prediction that sensing that Lilith may be in danger, Nikan decides to show himself to Joseph, all the humans to help Lilith. I think it's to either first of all to Joseph, considering mm-hmm. how close they are, Lilith and him, and to sort okay. of aid the process to sort of understanding who how they look like right sort of help him understand mm. that it's what Lilith is saying is the real um yeah i don't know when they will actually do it for all the humans i so you think it's initially just joseph I, i'm not certain i think it's just a joseph at the moment i think this is something you know considering the fact that joseph realized that they are starting to talk about behind Lilith's back, you know, that she's in danger. Hmm. He wouldn't come and just say, and I think considering that the Onkali are listening to them all the time, I'm sure Nikanj, opposite to what Kaguya would do, which was, you know, when with the Paul hmm. Titus situation, uh, Nikanj would definitely come in and try to save her, right? This is, you know, hmm. as much as Lilith is not happy, I think Nikanj really thinks of her as her family, uh, as its yeah. family. So it's definitely something to at least protect Lilith in some way. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, coming in to try and um, uh, cement an allegiance, as it were, between uh, Lilith and, and Joseph, give her someone else who kind of knows uh, the situation is, is, is real, right? Give someone some more evidence. Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, hope that, um, you know, whatever is going to happen, I mean, I'm sure... Uh, Nikanj will try to, you know, like I don't know. It's it feels to me that um, Joseph, I think Joseph is gonna take it well, considering mm-hmm. his attitude so far. Okay. I don't know if Lilith is got like I think it's gonna it definitely will surprise Lilith because she wasn't supposed to see any on Kali until she awakens forty people, and all of them are content yeah. with you know being awakened. Uh, mm-hmm. But let's see. I uh, I am looking forward to it. I think this is going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, some interesting predictions about that. Uh, I like it. Hmm. So, it's it, yeah. we're on chapter five, right? Well, chapter six coming soon. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There are fourteen chapters in this uh, book. I feel on this in this section. I feel like hmm. there's gonna be some spice development between humans. Like, um, I, I'm telling you, there's gonna be some some drama building up uh, when people are gonna be like, you know, oh, you know, oh, this group of people. To be honest, no, this is going to happen. So we let's not discuss this because I I've been talking about this before. I wonder what Tate is going to do. Okay. Because Tate was the first one to choose, right? And they never get to comp- uh, agree. Lilith and Tate never had happened to agree on anything, right? Hmm. But. I wonder what position Tate is going to take when the actual confrontation, the problem is going to arrive. Because so mm. far, um, I'm sure Kurt is going to try to know, you know, calm everyone because as a policeman, Celine is going to be useless as always. Mm. Joseph is obviously going to take Lilith's side. But what is... Leah, I think, is going to take uh, Lilith's t- uh, side as well because even though she's stubborn, mm-hmm. she will, you know, she likes L- uh, Lilith. But I wonder what Tate is going to do. I think okay. Tate is going to stir up some shit. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I, I like where this speculation is going. It's, uh, uh, yeah, I, I can't say much about it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. But I, th- uh, I yeah, feel like this is what this is leading. Like, there's going to be Ada, Ada, after Joseph uh, gets to know Nikanj and whatever happens, you no, know, he he's like, okay, now I believe you. And suddenly his behavior changes and Tate notices that it changed and something happened. And then she'd be like, oh my God, what did Lilith show you? Did you see the... And then Joseph goes like, actually, I saw them. And she'd be like, oh my God. And then basically she's going to stir up. Like everybody would be like, no, surrounding them. And 
he, Joseph would be like, oh yeah, I saw Don Kali. We're definitely on the, they're definitely alien. We've got to pull our shit, our mm-hmm. shit together. And then what's going to happen is either everyone be like, oh, no, 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 I see, I see. And then Tate would be like, mm, I'm not sure if I believe you, you know, we know you've slept with Lilith and, and this, and this the whole drama is going to start. Or she's going to take their side. Okay. So I'm not tired of saying, but I think she's going to mm-hmm. stir up shit. Yeah, I don't know. it's a an an interesting one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so <it> just <laughs> yeah, I can't really say anything about the speculations, so I'm just going to reveal something else. One more thing I just wanted to uh, ask about was, uh, what do you think? Um, how do you think you'd react to the Owen Carly? Because if, if we if we're uh, thinking about how Joseph's going to react to the Owen Carly, we think he's going to react well, but. Uh, <sighs> I just, how do you think uh, you'd react to, I don't to know. just it's, you know, it, meeting these aliens? The thing is, right, Richard, this is a very difficult question because I often, when I play games, mm. right, especially sci-fi games and you see aliens, right, right, mm. especially I'm a big, big Star Wars fan, right? I love the mm. Star Wars universe, all those aliens. You know, I had once just, you know, for all the listeners, just a uh, spicy uh, 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 fact on my life. I had, it was a dream where basically aliens visited uh, Earth and then, you know, they showed us all these planets, you know, the super vivid, realistic, almost like lucid dreaming, you know, type of dream. Mm. But, like, I am fascinated by by this different species, right? Like, I would love to know about, like, you know, I, I, reading about the Star Wars universe and, you know, all those different alien species and everything. This is my jam. Like, this is something I would be, mm. I would be content with. It's like, okay. Uh, can you tell me what's the name of the um, equation that tells how, whether the um, species can survive or how many species are there? Uh, it's oh the the Drake equation. Uh, is it? It's not as nice. Doesn't it start with F? Uh, it's about the uh, basically estimation whether the you know somebody how many you know alien yeah, yeah, species yeah. there are. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the okay, Drake okay. equation. Okay, okay. I thought I was maybe thinking of something else, but anyway. This this fact, you know, like I would love to see aliens, right? This is the fact that like the interesting, different mm. biology, different something. Because I mean, you know, I'm interested in life. I've seen, you know, I've, uh, mm. animals, and we see all those crazy develop, uh, you know, species living deep under the seas and oceans. Um, we find animals that have been stuck in caves for like thousands of years without any contact with outside with lizards that stayed unmovable for like 10 years have yeah stuff like that so and you know and because i'm exposed to also the imagination of other people in form of like the movies books games Hmm. i think i wouldn't react so strongly yeah as i think uh, you'd probably get i think i'd probably get like you, you, the initial like visceral kind of reaction to like you know a large animal in close proximity to you that's super yes, weird looking yes. right so you, you're gonna it's like being next to a a, a a tiger or a leopard or something like what we said way back towards the the beginning right it's gonna be like unnerving but once you kind of you know it starts talking in english you know, okay that's this is thing. another sentient I think entity that's the difference right because I mean, any time, you know, whenever I'm near, like, a big animal, like a horse, even though horses are nice, but they can mm. be dangerous, right? So yeah. I still have the yeah, intrinsic yeah. fear that, and even dogs, you know, it can be nice, but they can be... It's, there's a fear mm. that you, you cannot really communicate with them as such. But the moment you meet a species that you can actually communicate with, even though they look very alien to you, and not like something, mm-hmm. you know, they might not have faces like Don Kali, or they may have lots of tentacles around, but they mm. still can communicate with you, suddenly it changes the situation yep. because even though they might, as you said, this visceral sort of fear, it hmm. you can communicate with them, meaning that you can talk yeah. to them and then there's... N- and the fact that you can talk to them, I think definitely would diffuse that yes. a lot. So I think if I was put in this perspective and I was so an alien like that, I think I would freak out initially, but then realize that if they're telling the truth, like, you know, like, if, you know, if that's what it is, Right, that there's no um, the earth is blown up basically, and that you have to do something to let us survive. And basically, I'd be like, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. So once once I'm down off the initial adrenaline spike, I'm like immediately into asking inappropriate questions about their biology. <laughs> and where's your That's penis? Like... <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yeah, just like uh, super detailed interrogation about how 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 they work physiologically and uh, like about their technology and their civilization and just like uh, I'd yeah I'd feel like uh, oh my god and I, I, I imagine it, meeting someone from like an alien civilization who has high tech is just like the you've got like a month worth of conversations nonstop just like off the bat right there's no. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yes, there's so much to cover. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. That would be. I think it would yeah. be fascinating, and that's why I said like I would not. Hmm. I would love this because I love the Star Wars universe and uh, franchise, and I would love to you know sit down with the aliens, get to know their like physiology, and you know, I mean, already understanding the biochemistry of humans is bloody difficult. Now imagine I uh, you know alien hmm. species where you have like imagine a doctor suddenly just coming in is like oh yeah this is completely different it's like it's something fascinating and if they give me a chance to live longer mm. to understand all this hell yeah i would take it i wouldn't even hesitate mm. so yeah uh that's an interesting one how do you feel about the um like the hybrid alien human children see this is the thing right <laughs> um i don't know in my opinion right um considering the fact that i've lived in several countries right now uh already in my life i've met mm -hmm. people from i think more than 50 countries at least um hmm. via conferences via traveling around i've met i've seen many cultures right i'm not the type of person who is attached to where they came from and where mm -hmm. they live because the fact is that even though everybody is different and everybody and I have been already so many places that for me to be like I don't know super nationalistic is plain dumb. Hmm. Um, because hmm. it just this is more maybe more political sort of thing, but it will explain why what, how I feel about it is that mm -hmm. I don't understand people who are so nationalistic because they always think oh our country is so beautiful and everything, but the question I always ask myself is like, what the hell did you do to help your country, right? Like, you are you can be proud of your history, but what did you do to help improve your country and how to help the history to continue forward, right? This isn't like, mm. you know, me waving a flag or be like proud of who, who I am from origin, or origin from makes no sense. Like, why should I be proud of someone else's achievements? Right, so I'm do I'm trying whatever I do. I try mm. to make sure that whatever I do is to help everyone. Right, and this is maybe because I'm a scientist. That's why you know I I want to help people. This is why I want to do science. Right, to to do research to help people. Yeah, universalism. Yeah. So I believe that whatever wherever I am, it doesn't matter to me as long as I can sort of aid people. Right, and I can live happily and without any problems. You know, and any troubles. So when there would be a situation where an alien species that came in and only want to trade like the Onkali, I don't know what I would do, to be honest. Because in a way, if, I, if we were in a situation like Lilith is, where basically most of the 99% of the population, uh, of human population is gone, and the only way to survival is doing that, well, as survival goes, do whatever you can to survive, right? And that's pretty much, you know, that way you can forward whatever knowledge or you have history or, you know, you can preserve that movement. And, you know, as a Polish person, right, this is what helped to survive Poland. You know, Poland wasn't on the maps for 123 years uh, until after the mm. First World War. And yet the language survived, the community survived, the culture survived because people still maintained that even in hiding, they still maintained the, the sort of teaching people, right? And the same comes here. The survival comes mm. first. So if that came to me, I would do anything to make sure that whatever I did was for the good of people. And it doesn't matter where I came from, right? If I, if I had to, you know, bastardize myself I would still make sure that whatever my family is, they survive and they're happy. That's uh, I'm content with it. Mm. So when you say people, are you, are you limiting that definition to humans, or are you including well, the, well, the when I mean people, I'm that. talking about humans, right? In the moment to help them survive, right? Mm. But if, for example, you know, if if I'm adding, you know, if I have to add the Onkali in it, I have no problem. I mean, like the more variety. Mm. I mean, the problem is right. I have no problem, but we already have problem with people like 
just because they have a bit of me- uh, mel- melatonin, mel- melanin, melatonin, melanin, 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 yeah, in yeah. their skin, and there's already and, and there's already a problem, right? So I can imagine people mm. having problem with completely alien species, right? Melatonin is for uh, brain, isn't it? I always mix those two. Uh, yeah, me- melatonin is a yes, neurotransmitter. Exactly. So it's yeah. about melanin, right? Uh, a problem, and and mm. oh, people, you know, just because you're from this country and this kind, there's already problems, right? So us humans have are very tribal, and um, I think there would be a lot of problems with that. And I think a lot of people who would listen to this podcast also would have a trouble with my attitude. But I don't care because the fact is, mm. I am not going to be uh, proud of whatever my ancestors or you know whatever other people did because they're it's their achievements i'm mm. doing what i'm doing and i'm making sure that whatever i do is for collective uh good instead of just you know just because yeah okay that's, that's, that's interesting yeah, yeah i think my kind of immediate reaction is is somewhat similar but yes i have the you know the sort of transhumanist type ideals right and i'm a, I'm a biotechnologist and, and i'm interested in all this kind of genetic engineering stuff that these guys seem to have a really good handle on. So I think I'd be super carried away with my enthusiasm for the fact that they have all these capabilities <laughs> that I want to develop technologically. No, absolutely, right? absolutely. So I'd be like, I'd be sort of like immediately all in on the like, yeah, this is awesome. I'd be super pissed off if they didn't let me like, like you have all this tech and you, they're going to go, okay, now you have to go back to to Earth um, and 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 start civilization again in a jungle. I'd be like, eh. I mean, as much mm. as I love watching survival, Can I stay? Yeah, as much as I love personally watching survival videos and how to survive in wilderness, as much as and I like trekking and stuff like that, I and you know like camping, I would honestly be in the same position. I want to stay and continue doing, you know, learning about this sort of abilities you have and how can I achieve those abilities and how can we expand the knowledge even mm. further. Yeah, that's an interesting one because my, yeah, I I really I don't have, I don't think I'd have a particularly strong attachment to, like, the human sort of history, especially after we like, okay we 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 nuked ourselves in a nuclear war, right? I like mm, okay we kind of fucked up. Let's move on to it's you it's, know yeah, the next I thing. Think it's... I'm alive. These guys have got interesting stuff exactly. to do. Exactly, and, and I think this is the I'm problem. Damn with moving forward. This is the point because. In our history, even though this era we are in the moment, this age is like probably the least worst, there still was happening and there will probably still happen. But like, and but if you're looking around the world and this whole idea of like, I don't know, it just feels to me that if, you know, the world was burned to ground, doing Mm. the same mistakes over and over just because you believe you came from somewhere, it doesn't matter anymore. It's time to move on mm. and change this type of thinking you have, because this type of thinking, the original yeah. type of thinking, has taken us to destroying ourselves. So it's time to move on and change mm. this behavior. Yeah, I would definitely be. Um, uh, like, it sounds like from what we heard before, the Owen Carly have kind of taken uh, as many cultural artifacts from humanity as they could. Right, they've got our kind of our databases and our knowledge. Yes. Right, uh, I I'd definitely wanted to preserve that because I'd be fascinated to figure out. If they, you know, if we knew some stuff that they didn't, and you know what we could uh, Achieve, yeah. incorporate from from our knowledge into theirs and all the rest. No, of it. I absolutely agree. This um, is, would be fascinating. So, do, I mean, to be honest, if we now tomorrow be visited or to even today, like by an alien uh, ship, right, and suddenly there are they want to exchange things because we've developed some technologies that they haven't developed, hmm. or maybe they just want to share their technology with us because they think. Maybe this will help us to move into more an enlightenment type of. Uh, They're uh, development yeah, economists. Like, they uh, this this third world planet needs some aid. <laughs> it has oil. We need to give it freedom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's if I had the chance to be one of those people, the opportunity to actually study and present our knowledge, or at least study from, them, I would take this. Like it's, I don't know. It's just it's it's a very complex topic. And depending on where people come from, culture, their education, their upbringing, all of those factors would affect their decision, right? And everybody's decision mm. would be unique because they would, you know, some people like, you know, would hate it because they hate any foreigners or any, any somebody, anybody different than them. Uh, and somebody would love it and some people would love it. Some people would be like, meh, I don't really care. 
So it's it's just a finding of, you know... Yeah, as I get the impression that I might be perceived as something of a species traitor, <laughs> given my enthusiasm for the... Uh, like, ooh, this is interesting. Um, you know, I'd be kind of not paying attention to some of the, like, uh, political ramifications but then again, and, sp- and You whatnot, call it species you know, uh, survival. traitors, uh, Richard, yeah. but then again... At the 1950s, 60s, or whatever, when Lilith was, you know, born, whatever the situation was in America at the time, um, when, you know, black people were considered, you know, subspecies, and then whenever any white person would um, show any positive, you know, they would be called the species traitors, right? Race yeah, traitors. Race yeah, traitors. Yeah. So, hmm. I mean, do we... And now it's completely different, right? So it's not really that different. Like, I mean, the moment it's i think it's a matter of um times things change you know right i think our generations are already much more tolerant to all things and want the world to be more uh, maybe i think they are even though sometimes i read the news and i hate every human being that exists on this planet um <laughs> i think though in general people are getting better People are younger. People are getting more tolerant to understanding, especially because uh, uh, they're getting more educated. They understand that this is the collective understanding and compassion between each other is much more important mm. than the whole. Yeah, I mean the the tribalist kind of attitudes that run pretty deep, right? The, the, and they will. That they will sort of that pattern of response to uh, something alien uh, is pretty deeply ingrained in us. I think that so even i think because we're bad at learning generalized lessons right so we we may have learned in the context of you know like race and gender and sexuality and all this kind of stuff that that we shouldn't be prejudicial but some new category comes along and we rehearse the same oh yeah definitely this is gonna have yeah tribalist prejudicial 100%. stuff we, we we've not we've not we've not sort of uh lost that module right it's still there to be invoked so if aliens show up i think we could definitely still be capable of uh uh of, of sort of not generalizing because i mean it, it, there's a certain sense to it right because it makes for the most part good game theoretic sense to not just immediately trust some new group of other people who you don't have a that you, you've not been able to establish some kind of positive some relationship right you, you don't know whether or not you might be in zero-sum competition with this other group for something important so you know you gotta take a take a cautious initial route no i mean don't, don't go get me wrong i don't trust mm. anyone right like it's it's just <laughs> interesting me i you mm. know i care about my friends i trust them right as you said but anybody else i would you know i'd hold them with a three meter long stick away from me um to see what they're doing but at the same time i'm not the type of person who immediately would judge someone at least i hope i'm not I, at <clears> least <throat> i have matured and developed as a human enough not to actually judge straight away but you know it's it's uh, you're absolutely <clears throat> right that the whole tribalism in the moment the aliens will appear there's definitely would be something that uh would unite us if they were against us right if there would be those beings came to <clears throat> you know fight us or something but if they came in peace, I'm sure they'll be, you know, get out of the air, you know, the people protesting. Like, they're protesting now, you know, against masks or against pandemics or against other people. Like, it's or against, it's, it's, it's a non-going thing and it's going to continue. But I think it would eventually hmm. get people would get used to it. Yeah, yeah I think there's that... Um... Um, like, the, the concern... So, you know, if, if a bunch of aliens with superior tech showed up... Um, you know, like our history of when the group of people with superior tech shows up, it doesn't end well for the other group, right? So I could see that as a yes, legit yes, worry. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, but yeah, and then there's the the concern of whether or not, um, which is the fact that you, we'd probably be absorbed into their culture, right? That's kind of the way that that typically works, right? Some big imperial power comes along and even if it's not trying, just sort of absorbs, uh, you know, through, through through sheer sort of center of economic gravity and the rest of it and cultural gravity, just absorbs all these uh, surrounding cultures with, with which it has contact. And then they die out. And so I could see that happening to, to humanity if we encountered an alien species like that, yeah. right? We, 
we would we'd cease to be the culture that we are we'd evolve into one that had uh in a, a much closer resemblance to whatever the alien culture was i think um, i think the the compromise in here right like i mean it's it's evolution of culture is bound to happen right it's it's just a normal process of anything hmm. right just people things changing right hmm. this is this is one of the sort of basic law lo- basic laws of end of this universe that things change all the time and um hmm. i think you know there is a there should be a balance in everything right a balance of hmm. remembering where you came from the culture of you right the, the whole development and how we came through right and then the co- and the new culture embracing the sort of understanding of the new things right so but the thing is Richard, we talk about this but all those things we say today right so i say now a lot of people would go would fight their, with their teeth and their nails and anything to go against it because people hate change mm. some people hate change and that's that's the fact the people don't like new things. The people don't like to, you know. People still curse at the internet, right? The people don't like that the changes, no. <laughs> but that's just the way the you the world works. The universe works. Is that things just keep moving forward. The time doesn't stop. The time doesn't go backward. The time goes forward all the time. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I agree. Yeah, and it's it's just it's interesting at the this particular moment in the cultural zeitgeist. There is a lot of of concern about the the past sort of ills of you know colonialism and the like um and you know there were a lot of kind of atrocious things that occurred in the in that yeah, process and you know if um and it, if the aliens as you said came and colonize us like you know we obviously would be fighting back mm-hmm. because it's just the same feeling that people but we, we already caused this damage to you know ourselves and then somebody else comes out from the outside to cause this damage to us obviously we know what we've done Although some countries mm. or people don't want to admit it, but deep in uh, deep inside of us, we know what will all, all this happen. And if this took place, obviously we would be fighting against them. So that's, you know, as I'm saying, if those people, if those species came in in peace, that we can communicate and then they came to share knowledge because they feel like we need to know, we need to expand ourselves and, you know, join the collective that the universe, our, you know, galaxy is in or something. Hmm. It's one thing. Yeah, this is, a, this is a question of, like, there are better and worse ways of handling contact with new peoples. Um, <laughs> it's probably the the important uh, element there, right? The uh, the showing up and killing a bunch of people and sticking a flag and saying, yoink, this is mine now. It's not, not really the... Uh, productive approach but at the same time the um the sort of uh, the subtler stuff still ends up having a uh, ends up kind of morphing the culture in ways that people are uncomfortable yeah. with it's, it's an interesting kind of uh, uh, where people draw those lines about those concerns i think is a very interesting question because you know like the existence of say an alien civilization with which we could mm-hmm. trade for tech would have profound consequences on our economics and you know the technology always changes the way the social dynamics work and so on so that would change things even if there was no um you know like direct kind of invasion colonization type thing it becomes kind of an indirect colonization through cultural uh, cross contamination mm. i suppose you might call it um so even if you take the kind of the rosiest of scenario with respect to to conflict and kind of respecting one another's ways of doing things, you end up with a very different thing afterwards. I think um, I think that still makes some yeah, people uncomfortable. But I, I mean, I I'm, just want to say something. I don't mind. <laughs> I, I, I think the one thing the aliens wouldn't have to do much, to be honest, to destroy this uh, societies we have as we are, or at least affect in a very large mm. way. The only thing they would have to do is to bring us a way to produce or a source of energy, right? That we can easily miniaturize mm. that would make us remove, get rid of oils and stuff like that, right? The moment that this stuff would happen, just, just, just getting rid of oil industry mm. in general, just suddenly one swift move, like, oh, we have this energy that lasts much longer we can utilize for any the source is this and this 
Hmm. I mean, it's, it's very strongly analogous to just technological yeah, yeah, innovation, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, Some yeah, new discovery course. is made and it totally but shifts the, the way energy, stuff works. But what really drives the society is the energy sources, right? You know, like initially mm. wood yeah, and, yeah. you know, steam engines, then now uh, petrol engines, you know, what's next, right? Electric engines are sort of the mm. next thing, big thing, because, you know, and for effect on the environment and everything and the batteries are getting better. But eventually we might get engines that are really, uh, well, source of energies that are m- even more uh, efficient can support like instead of you know a power plant you know a nuclear power plant that can support maybe half of a country suddenly we have a pl- energy plant that can support several countries or a whole planet right hmm. well or even just uh, you know like uh, relatively small nuclear fusion would uh would do the job. Yeah, but in gen- general, yeah. in my, I, I imagine it's not nothing to do with nuclear fusion, nothing that we have we could have developed, something completely different, right? Absorbing dark matter or from the galaxy or something, something so esoteric that at the moment we have not that don't have the technology. Mm. And suddenly, all of the culture that we know as so far would change dramatically, like overnight. The technology of mm. the cars, the everything would just communicate communing around the so you know what would be used for um uh, i mean solar energy and everything it's fine but like there would be no need for that no mm. need for nuclear plants no need for oil plant no need for coal mines uh coal, coal, uh, coal power plants right every all of that gone so meaning that we don't have to pay for any you know uh gas or electricity also heating mm. right it could be also uh, using mm. that te- uh, technology we have electric heaters suddenly a lot yeah, of yeah. Com- it t- totally changes so the a lot of eco- uh, things that are uh, part of the economics you know like the gases electricity you know the, o- the only thing is the plastics right we need our oils you know the fossil fossil fuels fossil fuels to make plastics mm. because they're an important part of our um, technology but but yeah Although in the in this context, like the Owen Carly, they, they use plants. They right? have they all use, these cool yeah, biomaterials. They use biomaterials. But yeah. let's take that this doesn't mm. change. But the amount of fossil fuels that we would need would dramatically reduce, right? So suddenly, all these mm. big, big economical, like you no know, parts of economy that of a lot of countries, right, they would collapse, and suddenly mm. a lot of countries would collapse. I think, or at least there would be a lot of civil unrest, a lot of things. So just that, mm. right? Just that would affect. Um, and so I think. Yep. Yeah, yeah. These sort of relatively minor single points of technological change have huge consequences because of the way they're interwoven into the economics, and that has knock-on effects for yeah, the rest so of the culture. Yeah. So I think, like, so yeah. the aliens wouldn't have to do what we did to. Um, to during the colonization times they would just have to drop in mm. some piece of technology that we take you know we that would, isn't we cannot achieve ourselves but it's powerful enough that would really mm. turn things around yeah no there's a there's a great book um called uh oh, was it? the the traitor baru mm-hmm. cormorant by seth okay. dickinson I think. What's the book about? That has a similar, um, sim- well, similar kind of line. That there's a there's a um, an empire that is uh, sort of colonizing this mm-hmm. this island, but they basically just do it through economics. They like um, replace and devalue the local currency and make everyone dependent on like fiat notes from the the empire's yes. economic system, and then they have kind of a stranglehold over the local economy and they can uh, you know start building their schools and you know, this is kind of a much more subtle insidious kind of approach to absorbing yeah. this other culture I mean, this is what happens uh, at the moment with china and africa you know china is pumping hmm. money into africa but there's a lot of bad stuff is happening there as well hmm. yeah so there's, uh, there's the, that aspect of of uh, uh the way that colonization or the way that um uh Sort of a, a cultural merger of some description takes place is uh, is one that is sometimes underappreciated. People think of it as being you know we show up with guns, but oftentimes it's you show up with yeah. currency or something I, I subtler. Mean, the moment you if yeah. if a species of such a superior technology would appear at our doors, right? I don't think we'd have anything 
to really fight back. Like the moment they want to share the technology with us, one, it would be really stupid of us not to, to say no, because that would allow us to move forward a lot. But I feel like mm-hmm. um, I wonder what would happen with religion, though. Uh, yeah, whole other box. Yeah, another Pandora's that. box. To be honest, <laughs> this is what would happen because I mean, hmm. lots of religion focus as humans uh, as being the, um, the 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 sort of center of you know God's creation, hmm. and suddenly you're awakened uh, to we are by a speck in the ocean of species. Hmm. I think a lot of people wouldn't take it well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we definitely have um, there'd be a lot of upheaval there. But like, religion is very oh, yeah. plastic yeah. at absorbing new stuff uh, into its kind of canon. Like, I mean, I imagine some of the newer ones, like uh, I don't know, Mormonism and Scientology, might be able to. You know, they have things like there are other planets uh, as what, part of what their did you say Scientology? Of things they can adapt. Uh, yeah mm, yeah it, it's a good example in this case but i mean the, the those are cults like let's be honest like these are yeah. just to to you know to scam people of their money uh, well yeah i mean i yeah, i'm a, a skeptic and an atheist so like i don't really see any distinction between a religion if sort of fundamentally epistemologically yeah. between ordinary religion and cults i mean like there are important sort of sociological distances but like, uh, differences but the like the epistemology of the religious belief is equally yeah. ridiculous. No, 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 understandable. But, but I just, the, I just think that it. Yeah, to be honest, it's this. This conversation really makes you think about, you know, what. To be honest, I would like to um, see, for example, let's take the Star Wars um, universe. Like, how did the humans in that universe um, take? When you know the, when they realize that there's more species out there and there's, there's like empires and stuff like that, you know, like it's mm-hmm. this is what really um I mean most of the obviously the Star Wars universe is about humans, right? Obviously, the yeah, I mean the, the the Star Wars universe lacks a lot of consistency necessary to kind of use it as a thought yeah, experiment, but. For that it's, kind it's of thing, good enough in a way because it has sort of the um, the the idea of there is you know the combination of so many species, right? There's uh, the, the, there's lack of hmm. I mean there is some you know um, uh, speciesism in a way that you know some species hate other species and uh, they're always in a war with them, whatever, right? There's there is some sort of background in some books that were in the lore of Star Wars. There is some description of that. But I think in general, like, I would like to see what, I don't know, like, maybe some description oh. of, like, how would actually, you know, some, I would like to hear, or maybe listen, read or listen to someone smart who actually thought through hmm. this idea, how would humans react to a meeting on an alien species? There's um, Arthur C. Clarke book, Rendezvous with Rama, and then there are um, three... Uh, yeah, three sequels that he co-wrote much later with a guy called Gentry Lee. Um, the, the sequels are um, you know, some people don't like them very much because they're quite a different style to Arthur C. Clarke's uh-huh. general stuff. But there is a there's a kind of extended discussion in there about the kind of the way that the various religious institutions of Earth reacted to the knowledge that there was an alien species out there with like a technologically sophisticated alien species they never actually got to like interact mm-hmm. with them they because what happens in those books no no i've them. never uh... you've read this no. so in the first rendezvous with rama book this um massive cylindrical spacecraft like passes through the solar mm-hmm. system um and i think it's doing some kind of like slingshot orbit thing to get um, acceleration okay. from the sun and, we, and humans like managed to land a probe on it but never managed to make contact with whatever kind of controlling intelligence there is they just sort of explore it and you know, try and figure yeah. out what's going on and then leave um and and so they they know that these technologically sophisticated aliens exist and that has you know everyone's kind of freaking out about the fact that these things exist um, and then and this is a whole bunch of stuff about how religion handles the fact that there are these other species and um, 
you know, like the the Catholics have to come up with some mm. kind of canon explanation for all this. And one of the uh, characters in the subsequent books is a uh, a, a Catholic, and he's talking about the the theology of all these aliens with them. Uh, I think he actually speaks to the Pope. Uh, and you know, there's a bunch of different stuff like that in there yeah. about sort of how people accommodated this knowledge. Yeah, I, I, it feels to me like uh, we really went off tangent here, but um, <laughs> but I think it's hmm. it's interesting because <laughs> the next steps that those humans that live are gonna uh, uh, live is going to awaken, right? The, the whole idea is right. They have two ways to solve this pro the situation they're in. Either move on. Um, and start from scratch and basically try not to make the same mistakes the, their ancestors did, i.e. blowing the planet, or make the same mistakes. Mm. So I, I don't know. It just feels to me, but I feel like there's always going to be this few people there that just are so against any change, even though it hits them in the face. And the you can talk facts to them. They will still... Dig, dig their heels down, and they will never. They will refuse to accept the the situation. Mm. Yeah, I mean, in, in in this situation, there's very little choice but to to roll with it, right? You have to try and move yeah, forward. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's there's there's not much left to hold I still on to. I'm sure that whatever uh, you know, Lilith's is going to um um face. There's going to be some people who are just dumb enough to just continue with their obsolete beliefs and like just refuse to accept whatever the situation is hmm. but anyway i think i think <laughs> we should finish on that note yeah uh, yeah i mean we could co- <laughs> yeah i mean it's a a i mean you know it's it's, it's not a downer it's just a you know matter of fact you know this is going to happen um but there still is quite a lot of chapters in this section and then the next section as well so I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen, how hmm. Lilith finally, I hope finally Lilith embraces her leadership position. Yeah, I think uh, uh, progress and the necessity of moving forward with the new situation. To be honest, I think, Richard, that the best way to, um, how do you call it, to awaken those people, right, would be instead of in mm-hmm. that room, if Don Kali just put them in that jungle, or at least be like this, okay, you awaken 40 people, they get sort of used to each other, and then we let them go to that jungle, and this is where you sort of, you know, let them realize that oh, this is actually you need to learn this. This is not on the planet. You see, you, you can see the ceiling because of the ship. Get used to it, mm. and that people would be less sort of focused, and then they get to know. But I think that will be probably the next section of the book before they uh, mm. they do that. Yeah, it is an interesting choice to to kind of <laughs> awaken them in an environment where they can be uh, sort of legitimately skeptical of what their surroundings might be, as opposed to just somewhere that's blatantly Mm. alien and therefore kind of forces acceptance of, it would of the be reality like of the situation. Truman, the Truman so. Show, where basically they can walk back, you know, at a certain end of it. I'm sure some people would scout and suddenly they enter this like fleshy wall of a dome and they're like... Hmm okay, where the hell are we? And then, you know, you can walk mm. around and it's like a dome basically of flesh and then, you know, you have to survive there. And it's, but anyway, I, I just, I think that whatever the situation is going to be, I think Lilith is going to race to the position where she will have to stand on the position of the leader. And mm. I don't know what's going to happen next. Like, I, I, this book really takes twists and turns that, are hard. I wasn't expecting Nikanj to come in. I thought this book is gonna end up with I don't know Joseph and Lilith boning each other, but that uh, didn't happen. So well, not, not, then, um, oh, not on screen, on screen as, well. as it were. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think we should finish on this on this hmm. point. And yes, uh, I hope everybody's looking for the next towards the next episode. I think we're gonna do one chapter only because it's quite long. Yes. Yeah, it'll be just chapter six yes, next so episode. So we were the Xenothesis. You can find all our recordings or all the places we keep our recordings on xenothesis.com. All the links are there. Uh, I was Mike Glinka. I was Richard Acton. Bye. Bye.